21 x to the 3 n plus a 28 x to the 2 n. All right, now there's going to be a variety of regular fact, um, factoring type problems with numbers and that sort of thing. However, there will also be at least one on there that deals with these exponents. All right, now I did just two terms here just to kind of give straightforward idea here on how we're going to do this. All right, you need to kind of find the greatest common factor here. Okay, so you'll look at the 21 and, and the 28, and you'll recognize the 7 is your greatest common factor there. Looking at this, I've got x raised to the 2n, I've got x raised to the 3n. So the most I can take out would be the smallest exponent, 2n is going to be smaller than 3n. So my greatest common factor is going to be a 7x to the 2n. All right, and then simply taking that out, 21 divided by 7 is going to give me a 3. That will leave me then with an x to the n because I had three n's. I took two of them out. I have one left over. 28 divided by that 7 is going to give me a 4 x to the 2 n. I took the x to the 2 n out, so the 4 is the only thing that I have. All right, so while that one was just a take out the greatest common factor, all right, it involved those different types of exponents, and they will definitely hit that. Um, now let's go with same concept, but um, multi steps here. All right, let's suppose we had like an x plus a y to the fourth minus a 100 x plus y quantity squared. All right, now this one, again, on, on the factoring, they're not, they're gonna all be mixed up. So any type of factoring technique could uh, uh, apply. And it's always gonna say factor completely. So yes, there may only be one line of factoring that's needed, or you can have two or three lines where you have to apply two or three different types of factoring. Okay, now on this one, let's take a look at how many terms we have. All right, terms are separated by plus or minus signs. Everything in the term is being multiplied. This is considered to be a binomial. That's a binomial. Everything in here is being multiplied. Okay, so I do have two terms. So for my first step, the about the only thing I can do is take out a greatest common factor. So I'm going to look for that greatest common factor. All right, and it's going to be a binomial. All right, we did factor out binomials. All right, again, picking that smallest exponent. So an x plus a y to the second power. That's my greatest common factor. Okay, now, because I do have some parentheses inside there, I'm gonna go to square brackets here just in case. All right, because sometimes too many curvy brackets get confusing. Here, I've got the same base raised to the fourth power. I'm taking two of them out, which means I have two left over. So x plus y to the second power. Minus sign will come straight down. I have an x plus y to the second. I'm taking that portion out of this term. The only thing left over then would be that 100. Okay, so now hopefully at this point, you can look at that and say, oh, well, I'm not done yet. All right, this greatest common factor I cannot do anything with. But inside here, I have two terms and a minus sign. This is a perfect square root. This is a perfect square root. So in here, I have the difference of two squares. Okay, so clearly this is an example that's going to take more than one factoring technique to get to the, to the final answer. I'm going to keep this x plus y to the second power out in front. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and keep those square brackets. I may or may not need them, but I'm going to go ahead and keep them. Now, square root of this first one, I believe when we originally learned that difference of two squares, I came over here on the margin and I said, okay, square root of x plus y, quantity squared, uh, well, that's going to be x plus y as a binomial. And then I said, okay, square root of 100, that's going to be 10. And then we take these two things, write them with a plus sign, write them with a minus sign. So then this would be an x plus a y. And then I'm going to do this in a different color, plus the 10. And then it's that quantity times the first one, x plus y minus 10. And actually I ended up having tons and tons of brackets in there, but definitely this quantity is an entire quantity being multiplied by this quantity. So I am going to rewrite that answer just to clean it up so you can see it a little bit neater here. That's the greatest common factor out in front. Now, basically, I've got this times this times this. I've got three things that's being multiplied together, so I can drop the square brackets and that extra round brackets. So x plus y plus 10 
and then x plus y minus 10. All right, as a final answer. All right, so you can clearly see that in that factoring section, you're going to have some pretty simple ones, then you're going to have ones that are way more complicated. All right, so you just got to be prepared for any type of factoring that you might encounter.